Okay, so um, first off, we've got our reciprocal identities. Identities are just uh, different things that uh, these can equal, that, that sign can equal. We have, we've already talked about opposite over adjacent or that it's the y value on the unit circle. Um, but another, uh, the reciprocal identities, these two um, functions are reciprocals of each other. So sine of theta is going to be equivalent to 1 over cosecant of theta. And likewise, cosecant theta is going to be um, equivalent to 1 over the sine of theta, because that's what a reciprocal is, right? If you flip the fraction upside down, if you think about this as a fraction, sine over 1, the reciprocal of that would be 1 over sine. Okay, so um, these are also reciprocals of each other. So cos cosine is going to be um, the reciprocal of secant, and secant's the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, and then same kind of deal down here with tangent and cotangent. So these are the reciprocal identities. Okay, I'm going to throw some other identities at you, and then we'll uh, do some problems with them a little bit later, okay? So tangent, we've already talked about um, tangent. Uh, if we're talking about, uh, so Katoa tangent is opposite leg, uh, opposite leg over adjacent leg, okay? But then if we're on um, a, a unit circle, okay, so let's actually go down to this little unit circle that I have down here, um, and I'm going to draw um, a I'm just going to draw at like a 45 degree angle, something like that, okay? And I'm going to make this into a right triangle, okay? And let so our reference angle is right down there. Let's say this is a unit circle. That means that this would be 1, okay? This would be x and this would be y because I go x amount right and y amount up to get here, okay? So um, opposite would be y and adjacent is x. We've talked about that before, okay? But we've also talked about how the y is always uh, is the y on a unit circle is equivalent to the sine. Okay, so I could take that y in the x and write the y as sine theta over, and then x would be cosine theta. Okay, so what I was getting at the reason I put tangent twice here, I was just trying to show you why this is true. But this is what you actually want to know here for this tangent. Um, or this tangent identity, that tangent of theta is equivalent to sine of theta over cosine of theta, okay? So we've got two different tangent identities. This one's a reciprocal one, this one's just a, a tangent identity, okay? And cotangent, since it's the reciprocal of this, cotangent is gonna be equivalent to cosine over sine of theta, okay? All right. Um, I've got this example here. Um, I'm going to square cosine theta, all right? And I'm going to rewrite it without parentheses, and it might be a little surprising how it will, how it, it's written. It's written like this. You might have expected that the square would go at the end, but it doesn't. This is, means cosine of theta times cosine of theta, okay? So I just want to point it out. This is not the same thing as this. This is just when you're squaring the theta, when you're squaring the contents of the cosine. Um, so this is not the same, okay? So these are equivalent. That's gonna become important um, in our next Pythagorean, I, uh, the, the, the set of Pythagorean identities, okay? So here's the Pythagorean theorem, uh, good for all right triangles, okay? And the A and B will be legs, and the C is the hypotenuse, okay? and the sum of the square of the two legs is equal to the um, square of the hypotenuse, okay? All right, so if we take this and put it on a unit circle, let's translate this to this triangle I already have drawn over here, okay? So my legs here would be the x and the y. And then, um, the hypotenuse is 1 here, We've got 1 squared, which is just going to be 1, okay? Now, um, let's rewrite this in terms of sine and cosine, okay? Cosine is equivalent to x, sine is equivalent to y. The way I remember that, x comes before y alphabetically, cosine would come before sine alphabetically, okay? So that's, here's my cosine squared, my cosine theta squared.
Okay, and one squared is just one. So this is our basic original Pythagorean identity. Okay, cosine squared plus sine squared is going to equal one. We're going to use that a lot. Okay, um, there's also Pythagorean identities dealing with the other um, trig functions, and I'm not going to go through proving them with a with a right triangle, but I could. Um, but just in the interest of time, there's one that uses tangent and secant. It looks like this. Okay. And then there's one that look with that uses uh, cotangent and cosecant. Okay. A lot of times we'll want to um, play around with these equations a little bit. Like, say I wanted something that's equal to cosine squared. Well, I could just subtract sine squared from both sides. So cosine squared would be equivalent to one minus sine squared, right? Or maybe somewhere in an equation I have secant squared minus tangent squared. Well, if I move the tangent over, secant squared minus tangent squared is equal to 1. Okay, So we can play around with these terms and add and subtract them from both sides. Okay, so let's actually uh, start um, simplifying. Let's start using some of these, uh, these identities. Okay, We're going to use these to simplify different um, uh, expressions involving uh, trig functions like these three. Okay, um, But first, just some basic guidelines on simplifying trig, trig expressions. Okay, this, uh, if you, A good place to start on these, if you don't know where to start, is write everything in terms of sine theta and cosine theta. This isn't a rule. You don't have to do this, but it generally is a good way to start. Unless you've got another idea right off the bat, that's a good way to go. Um, it'll make it easier to to reduce the uh, um, to simplify and reduce once you've got everything in terms of sine and cosine. So that's my next suggestion. Okay. Um, these ones, it's going to be hard to know when you're done. Because it's not like we're solving for x or theta or something. We're just simplifying this and making it simpler. So the less terms, the better, and the less fractions, the better. If you can write, if you can write this with just one trig function, um, that that's a good indication you'll be done. Okay. So try to write the expression with just one trig function. And so I've got three different trig functions here. Let's see if I can get it down to one. Okay, so first step, I'm going to write everything in sine and cosine. Well, the sine part, that's already in sine. So now I'm going to take the tangent, and I'll try to rewrite that, okay? So tangent, I'm going back to those uh, identities that I covered on the last page. i got a couple different options for tangent. So tangent is going to equal 1 over cotangent. But I want to get that written with sine and cosine. Um, so if I use this other one, the uh, this one, that um, then we'll be in business. Then it's just sine and cosine. Okay. So I can rewrite tangent as sine of theta over cosine of theta. Okay. And then cotangent, I've got cosine over sine. Okay. Now um, I could uh, multiply straight across and put this all in one, um, in one, uh, make one fraction out of this, and that's fine. But I can, I'm, I'm going to be reducing after I do that, so I'm just going to get to that now. So if I imagine one big fraction here, hey, I've got a cosine in the denominator and one in the numerator, so those will cancel each other out, right? Same thing with these signs, and then all I have left is sine of theta. Okay. And then there's nothing else I can do with that. Pretty simple. A lot simpler than this. Okay. Um, and that's actually always going to happen um, when you multiply two reciprocals together. They're going to cancel each other out. They're equal one when you multiply them together. So it's not like they don't. They're not zero. There's still be one. But then I just have one times sine of theta. Okay. All right. Let's uh, try another here. All right, I'm going to start taking these pieces one by one. So cosecant, let's go back to, uh, I've got my uh, reciprocal. And so I, I can write that as 1 over sine. So any trig function, you can write, there's a 
there's at least one identity you can use to rewrite it in terms of sine or cosine, okay? Cosine theta is good to go. And then tangent is going to be, um, it's going to be sine over cosine, just like on the previous problem. Okay? And then I can start canceling things, okay? If I think about uh, the cosine in the middle, well, um, you could think of it like that, right? So it would be in the numerator. So, hey, I've got a cosine in the numerator and one in the denominator. And then I've got a sine in the numerator and one in the denominator. So this all equals one, right? I still got the ones there, but I'm just multiplying ones together. And so this simplifies to just one. Pretty nice. Okay. Um, all right, next one. Anytime I see a squared function, um, alarm bells go off in my head and I think, I'm probably going to use a Pythagorean identity. Not necessarily. In some of these problems, there's different paths you can go down. Um, but usually, I'm thinking to myself, let's see if we can do something with a, a Pythagorean identity, especially if you have a 1 added or subtracted to a squared term like I do here. Okay, But I'm still starting just thinking, OK, let's write everything in sine and cosine. So I'm going to leave this alone for now, the cosine squared. But then I'm going to the secant squared, and let's look. So you probably want these identities out when you're doing this, right? Unless you have them all memorized. And I'm thinking, let's find the Pythagorean one that involves secant. Well, here it is, OK? So I'm going to write this off to the side here. I've got, um, just to try to not get in the way, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, OK? So I can't substitute right into this. Oh, I'm sorry, I must screen here. Um, I can't substitute right into this because uh, it's not the same thing. But hey, I could rearrange this so that I get secant squared minus 1 on one side of the equation. All I'd have to do is subtract 1 from both sides here. OK, and now for secant squared theta minus 1, I can substitute in tangent squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now I still haven't got everything written sine and cosine, but at least I have one last term. It's a little bit simpler, okay? And now I can use the tangent identities. Um, so I'm looking at my tangent identities, still trying to get to sine or cosine with tangent. Uh, so that's not going to do me any good here, but I can use this one, okay? And even though this is tangent squared, I can still use this identity. It's just going to, tangent squared would equal sine squared over cosine squared. Okay. And when I'm saying sine squared or cosine squared, I really mean, I really should always be saying the theta. <laughs> but I'm taking a little shortcut. Okay, so I've got sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. Okay. And then, hey, now my cosines are going to, cancel out, right? Because that one would be in the numerator. If I multiply this all together, that one's in the denominator. And then all that's left is sine squared theta, okay? And you know, yeah, you could write this as 1 over cosecant squared theta, but that would be more complicated, right? So this is, uh, this is a good place to stop on this one. Okay, on the next page, these, uh, these problems are going to get a little trickier. So you can have like pretty simple questions like this, um, but sometimes they'll be more complicated. This first one is actually pretty straightforward. So I'm seeing um, sine and cosine, but they're both squared. And then so I'm thinking Pythagorean identities in the original one there with sine and cosine, if you add those together, they equal one. So hey, the numerator is just gonna equal one here. So that's nice. It's a lot simpler already. Okay. Let me see if I can write this without a fraction. So I'm thinking, wait a second, that looks like my um, my reciprocal identities here, right? So 1 over cosine is secant. So that means 1 over cosine squared would be secant squared. So it wouldn't be the I wouldn't be too uh, disappointed if, if you left it like this, but uh, this is a little better because we don't have a fraction anymore. We still just got one trig function. So you don't, your final answers don't have to be in sine and cosine. It's just a strategy putting everything in sine and cosine in order to simplify. Okay. So this next one is gonna gonna be tougher. Okay. 
We've got these two fractions, but let's start in the way we've been starting on all of these. I'm going to start by um, writing everything in sine and cosine. So I'm going to take these three bits and rewrite them. Okay. So let's start with the top left. That that's the reciprocal of sine. Okay. So I'm going to write um, this as one over sine theta. I'm using uh, a fraction like that. The only reason I'm doing that is just to kind of keep track of what's on top of the fraction and what's on bottom. Sometimes I see people say, oh, I've got sine over sine. This reduces to one. So I've just got one over one and that all equals one. But you can't do that because um, this is all in the numerator. Um, so it just isn't going to work like that. Okay. So keep in mind that's all in the top. Okay. And then for the second fraction, cotangent, well, cotangent would be um, x over y, so that would be cosine over sine. Okay, and then tangent would be y over x, which is sine over cosine. Okay, so so far it's not really looking any simpler. Uh, it's kind of a mess. But let's start sorting it out, okay? So I'm going to look at these complex fractions. So anytime I've got more than two layers on a fraction, I probably want to simplify that. And I'm going to do that by thinking of this as division. The division bar is this and this, right? So I'm going to rewrite these as division, okay? So um, this first fraction, I've got 1 over sine theta. That's the numerator. I'm dividing that by sine of theta. Okay. Second fraction, the numerator, I've got cosine over sine, and I'm dividing that by sine over cosine. Okay, sometimes I'll see people start reducing here, but don't reduce if you got division, because we need to combine this into one fraction. If it's multiplication, you could do that, because it'll look the same when you combine it. Okay. Um, so that's my next step, is rewriting this as multiplication. I've got 1 over sine of theta times the reciprocal of this, which would be 1 over sine theta. Okay, I'm flipping the second fraction on all these, so on both of these, so that I can rewrite this um, with multiplication. Okay, so now that I've got multiplication, I just happen to have a common denominator. I don't actually need one. I'm just going to multiply straight across. I am, I mean, I am going to need a common denominator when I get to the subtraction, but, um, and it just so happens I, ha I have one, so that's pretty nice. I already have a common denominator there, so I can combine these two fractions. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got this. It still isn't really looking that much simpler than the original, but I've got everything in sine and cosine now. So I'm thinking, what else can I do? And this is catching my attention on the top. So I've got two terms there. One of them's a squared term. One of them's a 1. So I'm thinking maybe I can do something with a Pythagorean identity. Okay. And if you look at this one, this is equivalent. If I, if I uh, subtract cosine squared from both sides, Now I've got something that I can substitute in for 1 minus cosine squared. Okay. I'm going to start working to the right here because I don't want to get in the way of the next problem. But 1 minus cosine squared is equivalent to sine squared. So let me go this way here. Sine squared over sine squared. Oh, that's just going to equal 1. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So that was a tough one. Um, and I'm, I know that there are different routes you could take. You could just like start to try to get a common denominator right away and combine them and see what happens from there. There's different routes you could go. Okay. All right. Um, let's try this next one. Same basic strategy. Let's start with um, by writing everything in sine and cosine. So I'm going to take that secant and rewrite this as 1 over cosine, because it's the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, already got a cosine in the numerator there. Denominator would be 1 over cosine again. 
Okay. And um, hey, this first part works out pretty nice because both cosines will cancel here. I still have the one, so don't forget about the one, but that whole first piece is just one. Okay. And then let's see, for this, I've got cosine theta divided by one over cosine theta. All right, let's rewrite this as multiplication. All right, so that'll be cosine squared, cosine theta squared. Okay, and then that again is catching my attention. It's actually the same as one I used in the last problem. One of those, that, that original Pythagorean identity, this is equivalent to sine squared. Okay. And there we go. All right. Um, all right. Uh, that's it for today. See you next time.